Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I congratulate everyone who received Holy Communion today on this feast, this wonderful feast of the resurrection of the fourth day, four day dead Lazarus. Particularly the young people. It is always a joy when our young people gather around the cup of Christ and receive his holy body and blood. And I hope that this experience of receiving the grace of God through Holy Communion will inculcate in all of you a desire to come back more often to partake of the body and blood of Christ, to partake of a taste of the kingdom of heaven. I also congratulate you on the end of Great Lent. Many of you perhaps did not know that Lent ended yesterday with the Vesper service. Of course, we continue to fast because uh, during Holy Week, which is a particularly important time of the year, the fast continues. But Lent, as, the, as a particular liturgical period of the Church, ended yesterday. And this day and tomorrow, Palm Sunday, is a special liturgical time, a two-day time, a prelude to uh, Holy Week. And in a way, this day, the resurrection of Lazarus, helps us to understand why Holy Week happened, why Christ was taken by the high priests, scourged, tortured, and crucified. And one of the main players of today's sacred event is, of course, Lazarus, the friend of our Lord and Savior and God, Jesus Christ. Lazarus was the son of Simon the Pharisee. Thus, Lazarus was a member of the Pharisaical sect. We usually think of Pharisees as the enemies of Christ. And certainly the majority were, but there were Pharisees who followed Christ, who were disciples of Christ in secret. And Simon the Pharisee, Lazarus, his father, was one of them. And our Lord spent time in Simon's house. And of course, Christ spoke about things eternal, heavenly. And of course, in Simon's house, the question of the resurrection of the dead and Christ's own resurrection was probably often discussed. And Lazarus heard, overheard these conversations and also became not only a disciple of Christ, but a friend of Christ, as did his sisters Martha and Mary. Lazarus was resurrected by Christ on the fourth day of his death. This was a wondrous miracle, and it didn't happen in isolation, because we know that soon before Lazarus' resurrection, Christ resurrected from the dead Jairus' daughter, Jairus being the uh, chief of a synagogue, and also the son of a widow. And when these two resurrections occurred, Lazarus came down with a uh, illness which caused him to die. And Christ was called to Lazarus' house. And we all know the story, I won't retell it, of how Mary stayed with Lazarus and how Martha came to Christ and said, if had you been there, he would not have died. And Christ answered saying that he's asleep. That's why from that day on we Christians say that 
so-and-so who has just died, he fell asleep in the Lord. Lazarus was, of course, asleep in the Lord. And he was resurrected to the amazement of those who loved our Lord Jesus Christ. And those who didn't were made extremely angry and decided once and for all to get rid of our Savior. But they also made a decision to kill Lazarus because Lazarus was a living witness of the resurrection, of the coming resurrection of, of Christ and the coming resurrection of all of us. So what did Lazarus do? Lazarus fled to Cyprus where he became in the apostolic first chapter of the Christian Church the Archbishop of the main city of Cyprus, Larnaca. And he served in this capacity for 30 years and died in the year 63 AD. And we know from holy tradition that Lazarus remained friends with the Mother of God and she sewed with her own hands his amaphorium, the piece of vestment that the bishop wears over his shoulders, and the cuffs. And these vestments were kept in the Byzantine Empire for a long time until they disappeared during one of the persecutions or invasions of the, of the Ottomans. In the year 980, Lazarus's relics were moved from Cyprus to Constantinople and put in a special church was built in his honor. Also interesting biblical trivia, if you will, is that the only author of the gospel who mentions Lazarus' death and resurrection is St. John. Because as we know, St. John's gospel was the last one. And he added those things which many of the other uh, gospel, uh, first three gospel authors didn't mention. And perhaps also they were, the, the resurrection of Lazarus wasn't mentioned in the first three gospels because Lazarus was still alive. And uh, John's gospel was written after Lazarus finally reposed a second time. It is also interesting that the Synaxarian, or the description of today's uh, holy event, mentions the fact that Lazarus, in the last 30 years of his life, made it a point to eat something that contained sweetness. Because after he resurrected from the dead, and he was dead, remember, I remind you, four days, there remained a bitter, taste in his mouth. Interesting. He never laughed. Only once, when he caught someone stealing a clay vessel. And he looked at the person and said, clay stealing clay. Meaning, we are all clay. From earth we come and to earth we will return. And of course, Lazarus was very sensitized to that because he himself was clay and was turning into clay and would have turned into clay had it not been for the Lord's decision to resurrect him. So, the Hebrews desired to kill Lazarus and most of all, they desired to do away with Christ. And thus begins, dear brothers and sisters, Holy Week, as we begin to remember with the triumphal entrance into Jerusalem, the Lord's Passion. His entrance into Jerusalem is triumphant. Many people came out to see him because they heard of the resurrection of Lazarus. 
And we know that in the Gospel, the Lord wept twice, at least twice. He wept when he approached the tomb of Lazarus. Why did he weep? Probably because he felt, as a human being, that he is now approaching the moment for which he came into the world to be sacrificed. He understood that he is coming face to face with the enemy, and death is the last enemy of the human race. Christ also wept when from the Mount of Olives he looked over Jerusalem and realized that his people had turned away from him. Does Christ weep in the kingdom of God, in his Father's heavenly paradise? Well, probably, in a way, when he sees us contemporary Christians going farther and farther away from the Gospel teachings. When we are weak in our faith, when we turn consciously, turn away, turn our backs to the Lord. This is a time of the year, Holy Week, for which we live, when we can renew our faith, dear brothers and sisters and make sure that we do everything possible not to turn our backs to our Lord, but to be faithful to Him, as Lazarus was faithful, as the myrrh-bearing women were faithful. We will hear much about their heroics, spiritual heroics, in the days to come when we hear the Passion Gospels. May we remain faithful dear brothers and sisters, and of course, God will always be faithful to us. Even if we turn our backs and come back to Him, we are reminded in the parable of the prodigal son that the Lord constantly awaits our repentance, our return into the bosom of, uh, of our Lord. May God all help us to achieve this faithfulness. Amen. Благословение Господне на вас, так благодати человека любим всегда ныне и присно, и во веки веков.